All right. Hello, everyone. It's Daishian Miller coming to you from my not quite <laughs> close to being finished uh, home office, getting back into the house. This is great. Uh, I know there's going to be a little bit of an echo kind of weird thing. We've got some sound dampening stuff that's going to be going in. But since they changed the Internet service over from the uh, rental, for those of you who don't know, right, recovering from a fire that happened two years ago and uh, just now getting back into our house. So. Anyway, um, how do you, and this is a good example of that, right? How do you own and maintain your power, right? Your confidence, your power, your control over yourself and over the things that you're trying to maintain influence on, success, life, those kind of things, when the world just seems hell-bent on draining you of everything that you have. I'll talk about that and more when we come back. So the big question is this, how are self-defense and success-minded people like us, concerned citizens worried about protecting ourselves, our loved ones, and the things we care about from the monsters we know exist in the world? How do we train in a way that gives us the skills, knowledge, and understanding we need without becoming paranoid fighters or killers ourselves, and yet still allows us to be the hero protector the world needs us to be? That's the question. And this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Jeffrey Miller, and welcome to Kuden Radio, real training for real people in a real world. All right, and we're ready to start. Anyway, if you like the decor, right? Uh, shift things here a little bit. Got stuff going up. Got my artwork. I'd say it's starting to feel like home, but uh, anyway, all right. So, got a whole lot more to do. Uh, small space, but we're going to make it work, right? Anyway, all right, so Kudan episode 150, and unfortunately, James couldn't be here uh, to enjoy it with me. Uh, he still has some other things that he's doing and taking care of. Anyway, so uh, if you see me fiddling around and reaching toward you and, and whatnot, um, I forgot my my uh, wireless extra devices and things at the dojo today, so I don't, uh, I don't have my like secret things going on, right? So anyway, all right, so episode 150, right? We're talking about personal power, owning it, maintaining it, that kind of stuff, right? So uh, the plan for this episode is to uh, take a look at uh, things from a, from a couple of different angles, um, looking at our Sanmitsu, right? Our triple secrets of success, the thought word indeed, which is some of it's a bad translation. Anyway, uh, so we're going to take a walk around the mandala, uh, from these different realms, right? Uh, often, uh, my teachers used to call this realms of power, right? Uh, they're actually aspects of us, right? Or, or of our uh, of ourselves, right? But they're things that we can work on, we can hone, right? And the more of these things that we have uh, control of, the more of these things that we have activated, the more of these things that we have power uh, in, right? The greater our chances of success. So uh, if you're on, uh, I have my chat thing up. So uh, if you're on, you want to say hello, that'd be great. That way I know that everybody can hear me, right? Uh, and if you can't hear me, well, then send that message too, okay? So anyway, all right. Um, so let's dive into things, right? Power, right? What is power, right? Because often um, this is one of those things like greed, and, and other such things that we were taught as a child, right? That um, uh, it's a bad thing, right? Don't, don't do that, right? And then you add power hungry or greedy for power or whatever. And um, boy, everything really starts to get convoluted, right? But what I'm going to suggest, right? I'm, I'm wearing my Kodo uh, t-shirt, right? If you, for those of you who don't know, Kodo is a Japanese... Uh, band, musical group, right? Uh, they actually own their own village, right? So if you join the group, uh, you and your family move to this, uh, I think it's a seaside kind of uh, village if they're still in the same place. And uh, because they practice so much, right, that they, they have their own secluded kind of thing, right? Um, I'm wearing it because uh, I saw them live once. I mean, I've seen them in movies. They were in, uh, I think, Black Rain and a couple of other um, movies that had a uh, American Japanese kind of uh, flair might have been in one of the Bruce Willis Die Hard movies as well, but anyway, um, had a chance to see them 
in one of the five theaters in Pittsburgh. And that happened to be set up in the smallest theater, right? And we had nosebleed seats. And I mean, literally like the brick wall, right? For the back of the theater was behind us, right? Uh, they were just last minute. It was one of these last minute things and uh, had to go, right? Had to go. Kind of like seeing the uh, the uh, Shaolin monks, right? Uh, that was, again, one of those last minute kind of things, but had to go, right? I don't know if you've ever experienced that kind of thing, but um, you know, and of course you have to be set up and, and kind of able to drop things and, and, you know, grab an opportunity at a moment's notice. Um, sometimes you need time, sometimes you need resources. Sometimes you just need the freaking gumption to just go right. Um, and, and just do it. Right. So anyway, um, thanks Phil. I appreciate you uh, checking in and letting me know that that sounds good. But anyway, um, in retrospect, right, after the event was over, we were really glad that we had nosebleed seats. I can't imagine people being right down where the orchestra was um, among, you know, on top of all the extra little insights that we had, like, you know, how they move in, in Ichimonji or Sagan and Doko and, and those kind of things. Uh, a lot of the guys, right, with these big battlefield drums, which is what it is, right? Uh, Kodo is a is a uh, taiko drumming uh, group, right? And um, a lot of these uh all these drums are just huge, right? Um, saw a one that was kind of a small to mid sized one in this dojo. It's in Kyoto, I don't know, a couple blocks down and around the corner from the Heian Shrine. Uh, for those of you who are planning on going to Japan with me this year or any year, um, this is one of the stops we try to work in. Um, we make it to the Heian Shrine, but depending on class schedule and whatnot, um, Anyway, so the first time I took students there, and if you don't know what it is, it looks like a really tiny temple, right? But it's actually a, a Budokan, right? A, a martial arts training hall. And it's still set up um, decor-wise and everything uh, the same way it was back in the days when the Shogun would have sat and watched classes and given a thumbs up or thumbs down. It was done with a fan, but right, an okay to the class, right? Um god or buddha or whatever helped the instructor who uh didn't get an okay for class right uh next week there would have been a different instructor and so anyway um uh so where was i going with that so kodo right um when they were playing right the entire theater vibrated right i mean there were people there was a woman just in front of us that uh, my wife saw in the restroom after we were done and on the way out. And this woman said, you know, she had lived with pain for most of her adult life. And she was ecstatic. I mean, she was like pain free. Right. And uh, this has to do with Kododama sound spirits and, and not spirit spirits. Right. But this whole idea, the Japanese and the, and, uh, the folks in the East have been looking at this idea of vibrations and, and things like that and how it affects the body and whatnot uh, on a regular on a regular basis, right? So, I mean, for centuries, right? But anyway, it was really, really cool. And so the the sound was just, you know, it was, it was just there, right? Um, I can't imagine, right? Um, I, I don't know that I would have enjoyed it if I were down, you know, in the, in the expensive seats and all that right up on the stage. It would have been overwhelming. Um, I mean, I didn't see anybody's head explode or anything like that, but, you know, anyway, so, um, but anyway, I thought it'd be fitting to wear my Kodo shirt because I still have visceral memory of that, uh, that experience, right? So, but anyway, we're going to talk about uh, power and we're going to talk about uh, the past couple of episodes. If you've, if you've caught them, then we've gone over things like hindrances and, and things like that. And uh, for the most part, my discussion has been, uh, you know, about guarding your mind and habits and, and character traits and, and those kind of things. Right. Um, but they all count. Right. So I, I don't want to rehash things. OK, so like I said, I'm going to go around the mandala and my stuff is still put away here. So at, at some point uh, we'll have things set up. And uh, the plan is, I mean, it's my home office and it's my uh, I think it's a pretty cool man cave if we're going to use that term. But um but at the same time, I need to get some sound dampening and, and whatnot. But the plan is to have mini sets set up 
so that if I'm doing something for my Mikio students, right, I can I can just realign things and I'll have a whole side for that. Uh, this is just generally what I'm going to be using for for uh, Kuden and whatnot because uh, this, this scroll that's behind me uh, has a lot to do with power and perseverance and whatnot. And what you can't see is it's about um, what is this uh, nine feet long, almost eight feet long, right? So uh, and it was a it was a gift from from a, a Japanese well the parents of a Japanese friend, right? Um, it's it's really really old. I mean it's it's fraying. I don't know if you can see right? you can't see it. It's it's above here where there's splits in the paper and all that, and um, I, I hesitate to get it restored um, because it's it's really old. And um, so it was given to me uh, not because they knew me, but because. Uh, by reputation, they knew what I did and how involved I was, and they wanted it to go to someone who would appreciate um, it more for more than just you know uh, cool kanji kind of thing, right? And so anyway, um, but anyway, that's that's the plan. We'll we'll just keep working on this thing, and and it eventually it'll it'll all get set uh, to figure out a good angle you know, for the camera and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, a couple of, uh, couple of symbols of, uh, of power, those kind of things. Obviously my bookshelves are still, are still empty. Um, but they'll, they'll be full. Um, uh, we have, uh, the, the amount of things that either got destroyed or came up missing, right. Um, uh, from these people that are bonded and supposed to be storing our stuff. It's just amazing. Um, lost, Four bookshelves. My wife ordered five for me because, well, she knows me, right? And um, I got have these other ones, but you can't see at the desk. At the end of the desk, is I have, I have uh, bookcases flanking the end of this uh, new desk that my wife got me. But anyway, so getting my shinden together. They broke one of my shinden, one of the ones I, I brought back from Japan. Um, just. <laughs> sometimes all you can do is smile because you need to hold on to what you have. Right. And so anyway, all right. So that's, that's where I'm going to go with this. So I see that Phil is on. I see there's a couple of other folks, people have been coming and going. Uh, so uh, hopefully this will, you know, have the same kind of value for, uh, for you that other ones have had. Uh, and then yeah, of course, at the end, I'll, I'll take any questions that, that anybody wants to pop in. I'm hoping, right. I'm hoping that, the watch time through YouTube is higher, right? Because, uh, you know, all the kanji, right? All the kanji, right? So did I manipulate some of it? Um, yeah, kind of. I mean, I, I obviously wanted that behind my desk and, and the Chinese paintings. that They're actually prints uh, that were done by an actual uh, Chinese artist who moved from China to Canada. Uh, and I bought, it from his, from, bought them from his gallery um, in uh, Toronto. Oh, wow. Decade? two ago, something like that. Right. Um, and when I was buying them and we had a discussion about what I do and all that, uh, he gave me this entire lesson about all the symbology in, in Chinese paintings, uh, water flowing toward you, bamboo cranes, all that kind of stuff. Right. So we'll talk about that, um, in a bit as we get to that part, but, um, anyway, so we'll just kind of jump around. So if you're familiar with the, uh, the mandala, uh, the uh, Mikio mandala that we use, uh, and there are there are many, right? I mean, I have ones from Tibet, and but I'm talking about the ones from uh, Shingon and Tendai. So uh, there's this one uh, mandala that has nine panels to it. Okay, the Kongukai mandala, Kongukai Diamond Thunderbolt or Diamond Realm. Um, it's the universal God's eye view of the of the universe where everything seems to be structured and all that that nine paneled version um is um is uh actually it's is that out of reach mm, yeah it's out of reach anyway so sorry um that's the shingon version right the tendai version is just the center panel blown up and it has to do with the the order in which you go through uh, the mandala in each of the schools. One goes Kongokai, Taizokai. The other one goes Taizokai, Kongokai. So it doesn't really matter. But what I'm pointing to is uh, there's this there's this diagram that I use. I have a, a worksheet for my my inner circle students that uh, has five circles. So there's vertically there's three, and then there's two that flank the center one. So it looks like a Roman cross, right? And it's a walk around. Uh, the, the five elements, but they're laid out differently than they are in the 
uh, in the Tibetan form or what you would see in Japan with the stupa, these little uh, statues that have uh, a square block and then an orb and then what looks like kind of a kind of a, a rounded uh, arrowhead and then a bowl and then a teardrop. Right. So that's the, the godai or the five elements as most people uh, would recognize them with the earth, fire, wind, uh, earth, water, fire, wind, void in ascending order. I keep bumping my, uh, my uh, microphone. I'm not used to being in here. I'm used to being on the other side. And usually you guys can't see it. But anyway, different configuration. So um, in on the mandala, right, the the elements are laid out differently right? It's, uh, I'm going to have to do this backwards so that you see it the right way. So it's earth, water, fire, wind, void, right? Um, and if you see a little pattern in there that might look like something that most people in the West think came out of World War II, but actually is way, way older, um, then yay for you. But, um, there's lots of ways to read this, right? There's the student's journey, uh, which is uh, akin to the the uh, the course of a day, um, uh, you know. The, the the again, when we're looking at the the five elements from an ascending or from a from a manifestation kind of thing, right? Energy manifestation: earth, water, fire, wind, void. This kind of thing, right? But um, as as we progress and move through things, whether it's a technique or our life or uh, personal progress, development of personal power in this case or whatever, right? Um, you actually move through it uh, like the sun moving in the course of a day, right? So it's water, earth, fire, wind, void. It's different, right? So anyway, um, I'm just, I'm going to go through, uh, go, go around the mandala, but not literally around it. I'm going to probably just stick to the, to the, the uh, form that most of my students are used to, right? So uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at each of these realms and what they contribute to power, okay? Because ultimately, we're still looking at thought, word, and deed, right? So um, what's going on in our head, right? What do we envision? What kind of thoughts do we have on a regular basis, right? Do they serve us, right? Or do they serve to undermine, right? I mean, it's it's bad enough that people, places, things, events, nature, whatever in the world, do what they do, right? To tire us out, wear us down, suck out energy, constantly put us through trials and all that, right? But for us to be an accomplice to our own ass kicking, that that would be a little bit of a different problem. Um, for those of you who remember the rental place, right? I, I would have the furnace kicking on. Um, I'm going to have to do something with sound dampening because some people like to play their... Uh, car stereo is loud enough that you can hear it inside your house. And that's, <laughs> there's a major intersection right outside my, uh, my office here anyway. So, uh, and if not, if that's, if you, if you hear it and it's not annoying, then just count it as background music, but unplanned. Okay. So, um, but what we're going to do is we, we want to take a look at how all of these things are affected by or come from one of these three elements, right? And these are actually the, these three elements. One of the first lessons I got from my Mikio teacher was that, that we create our own reality. And that doesn't mean that there's not reality going on out there, right? But generally speaking, right? Um, in Buddhist uh, practice, in uh, I'm going to use the term thought because most people want to gravitate toward this word called belief, right? And Mikyo and, and everything that comes behind it, right? Um, it's not something you're supposed to be believing in. Oops, I'm missing something here. Uh, it's, it's not a belief in, right? It's a, get the right one? Yes, okay. It's not a belief in, right? It's, it's, it's something, uh, these are truths or, or discovery of truths or natural laws or whatever, that people discovered and keep rediscovering right down the line. This is not dogmatic belief. Okay. And this is not like I'm jumping on the system. So this is now what I'm supposed to be believing in. That's not belief or that's not uh, truth. That's indoctrination. Okay. That's uh, adherence to uh, a rule structure or whatever. Okay. Um, in, in Nijutsu, right, we have this, this phrase that actually long before Shikin Haramitsu Dai Komyo, right, became the, the opening and closing for class, we used Ninpo Ikan, OK? 
Okay, Need Boy Khan. The way of the ninja is the way of the universe. The way of the ninja is the one way. The way of the ninja is the way of naturalness. It's all the same thing, right? The whole idea is the closer I can bring myself to the way things are working, right? Not because that's the way I want them to work, but natural law, universal law, right? Truth, universal truth. Um, the closer I can do that, then the more, one, I can be in tune with the way things work and make things happen easier because I'm going to be operating in accord with, right? Um, but also I stop swimming upstream and uh, there's a whole bunch of other things that come with that, okay? So anyway, um, but again, this thought word indeed, this is the way we we create our reality, right? We create our reality with our thoughts. We create our reality with our words and we create our reality with, uh, with our actions, okay? So if we're talking about owning and maintaining and creating and whatever, this personal power, right? The results that we create in the world, right? Getting what we want and making the world a better place because we got it, then we need to be mindful of these things, right? The, the Noble Eightfold Path, which is the path to, uh, to, uh, to I, don't know, I guess, I, if we were using a Western religious term, the, the way to salvation, but it's really about eight areas of your life that you need to be mindful of, right? But the Noble Eightfold Path all reduces down to thought, word, and deed, okay? It, it's the same, okay? So in Mikio, everything just kind of gets encapsulated, not watered down, right? Not watered down, okay? So, uh, so the idea is that if we believe something, right? So thought, right? If I believe something to be true, then it's true. Even if it's only true for me, right? It doesn't have to be true for anybody else. If I believe something to be true, then I will, I will think other thoughts that, that just keep looping for that thing, right? Um, plans that I create, words that I speak, whatever, right? However you're working with the word, the, the word, word, right? But again, just like thought is a bad translation because that has to do with intent and belief and perspective and those kind of things. Um, word um, is not just what we speak. Sorry, I forgot to turn off my buzzer here. Get rid of that. Okay. So um, it's also plans. It's also, uh, you know, communication. It's the, anything that has to do with, with the, the, the connection between our inner world and the outer world. Right. Um, you know, but the words I speak, right. Um, they're going to attract certain people, certain types of people. They're also going to repel certain people, certain types of people. The question is, are they attracting the kind of people we want to hang out around and repelling the ones we don't, right? Or do we have a mismatch, right? Am I not attracting the kind of people that I really want to hang out with, right? Whether it's mentors or, you know, whatever, people that can help me, that kind of thing, positive people, whatever, right? Um, and am I attracting, you know, shitheads and energy suckers and or energy vampires and whatever, or do I get this kind of a mismatch, right? Um, what we have to come to understand is we're the magnet, right? We're the magnet. People are attracted to us because they see something in us that makes them feel comfortable to be around. What that usually translates to at the most simplest terms is we act like them. We think like them. We believe the same things they do. So they feel comfortable around us. Okay. The question is, are, are you producing the connections and the and, and whatever that you're looking for? The problem is that most people don't know how to do that. So what ends up happening is they cause an even greater drain on their system, uh, their power and, and whatnot, because they they blame the, the, the problem is, is always outside themselves, right? So again, another big difference and, and why I always say that that Mikyo and everything that's associated with it is a spiritual tradition, but not a religious tradition, um, is there's nothing outside of ourselves that we're trying to 
um, to appease or to live up to or whatever. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't. Okay. Only here in the West do we believe that we can only have one spiritual tradition that we follow. Okay. We can have something that tells us about what's going to happen afterwards and, and all that kind of stuff. And we can have one that just guides our day to day things. Sometimes it's, it's the same thing. It's, it's, it's both, but either way. Right. Um, but the question is, right. Are we attracting or are words producing the results that we think they are? And life is our litmus test, right? Life is the mirror. Life is the reflection, right? You'll know, you'll get instant feedback, right? Sometimes it's not so instant if it's a big project, but you know, if you're talking to somebody, if you're really tuned in, you'll know whether or not they're being cordial and being nice and friendly, or if there's actually a connection, right? Um, and we're not just deluding ourselves that they like us or they want to hang out or whatever. Okay. And same thing with our actions, right? Our actions. So we, we control our world. We, we produce our reality and all that by the way we think, by the way we speak and the way we act, right? Um, you know, our actions attract people, repel people, the way we dress, the way we carry ourselves or whatever. And this has nothing to do with the people that want to be nonconformist and, you know, individuals and whatnot. Absolutely. Right. Be the individual you want to be just right. Are you producing the results that you want to be producing? Well, it's not fair. People shouldn't judge me. You're right. Meanwhile, back in the human condition, okay. Right? So there's lots of people running around the world now trying to change the world and force their view as though they were God, right? And as though they know everything. And most of them are in under the age of 25, okay? The human brain hasn't, hasn't finished developing, hasn't fully developed. Things haven't grown. Things haven't switched on until around the age of 25, okay? After that, you now have full function to be processing things. Okay. Before that, well, we'd like to think that we know, right? Anyway, all right. So uh, we're starting with this, right? That here's how we produce our reality. Okay. We're going to take a walk around the mandala and then we're going to come back to the, the Sanmitsu and take a look at what we can do starting right away, starting right now, okay, to own or recognize more of our own personal power, right, and to maintain it so that the energy vampires and, and whatever, right, doesn't serve to undermine it, okay? So uh, let's start with the earth element, all right? So again, I'm using these expedient words, right? And they're, they're used, right? Chi, sui, ka, fu, ku, right? Chi, earth, but it's not, it's not the ground. Okay. It's not dirt. Okay. That kind of earth, dole. Okay. Dole. Earth, land, that kind of thing. Right. Okay. Chi is the essential nature, the kotsu, right? Points to the kotsu, right? This thing that has to do with strength and stability and, uh, but also value and uh, almost a there's a, there's an idea of mentoring in there and whatnot. Okay. But it's, it, it's, it, it's about somebody who's balanced, structurally sound, uh, uh, confident. They have a firm, uh, resolve, right? This will be so. Okay. Most people don't do that when they're setting goals or they're acting on goals. Okay. We're kind of hoping that it works out. Okay. That's not a firm resolve. Okay, so uh, there's a good start with Earth, right? But from this idea of power, right? What do we stand for? Okay, what what do we believe, and do we hold true to that? Right? Do we hold steady? Okay. Now it doesn't mean if we get contrary information that shows us that something that we thought we knew, right, is an error. That doesn't mean that we can't change. Okay. What it means is we, we, my thing is truth. Okay. My thing is truth. So 
if somebody comes at me, right, I don't care how they're coming at me. If they're trying to get me to change my truth so that they're more comfortable, they're going to have to show me where I'm in error and not use guilt, shame, and all that other crap to make it happen. Because that's what, that's what children do. Okay. So there's this idea of, of uh, command. There's this, uh, like, are you in command of your life? Do you have boundaries set up? So only if you open the gate, can somebody come through on that side, right? Or are you like most people, there are no boundaries, right? You just don't want to offend anybody, okay? Which is negative wind, by the way. Um, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to make anybody upset at me. I don't want to be kicked out of the group, that kind of thing, right? Um, or I just, I, I don't know what I really stand for, right? Never give it any thought, which means imagine having property, right? And I know some people, uh, how dare you, right? Okay. Um, if I, if I didn't have a fence line up, if I didn't have gates, right, people would just come and go trample through, do whatever the hell they want and whatever. Right. And that's, that's what happens. Okay. That's what happens. Okay. So what do we, what do you stand for? Okay. And how firm is your resolve that the things you're working on, the things you're going to do, they're going to happen. Okay. Unless you die, they're going to happen. Okay. And again, I'm coming at this from my perspective and, and what I've realized to be true. Please don't take this like I'm on some kind of a, I'm standing behind a pulpit or I'm on some kind of a, you know, soapbox or whatever. This is not, I'm not telling you what you need to do. I'm, I'm pointing to questions and, and things that, I mean, this is way older than me, right? We're looking at 1600 years on the Mikyo side and over 2,500 years on the exoteric Buddhist side that that came from and then go back another thousand or two thousand years to the Vedas and the Upanishads and things like that where these things came from. Or you can look at the Judeo-Christian side because there are esoteric things on, on that side as well. Okay. Um, anyway, so the, the whole idea on the earth side, right, is not just this command and firm resolve, right, but recognizing your value, right? One of the symbols from the earth realm is something called a wish granting or wish fulfilling gem. Okay. So someone is in need and you have the knowledge, the time, the strength, health, ability, resources, whatever, to be able to help them, to, help, to be able to help alleviate their pain, their confusion, their need, whatever it is. Right. So, Sometimes we just need to sit down and do a little assessment, just start writing out, right? What do I know? Like, what am I good at? Okay. What do I like doing? Which means I'm probably more knowledgeable and good at those things, right? Um, uh, what, let's see, what else over there? That's, it's pretty much that, right? I'm, and you can also make a list of like, you know, who looks to you? for provision or knowledge or safety or whatever. Okay. Um, and, and keep that list, right. Especially if confidence is a little shaky, those kind of things, right. This is a way to, to, to go through and remind yourself, look, dude, do that, whatever. Right. This is, you already have this, right. You don't have to have built the Taj Mahal to be able to help somebody. And you also don't have to be the top expert in your realm. I'm not trying to be the top expert in ninjutsu. Okay. I'm not trying to, there's way, there's enough people running around trying to be like, or trying to be Hatsumi Sensei or whatever. Okay. I have realized that I only have to know enough to help those farther back than where I've already been, right? Because I already have mentors that are way farther ahead than me that I follow. So I'm not, I'm not trying to be them. Okay. I only need to know more than my students know. And there's already been students in my, in my training career that got to a certain point and I introduced them to one of my teachers. Okay. So they're no longer a student, they're a peer or a friend. Um, 
but they hit a point where I can't help, dude. Go over there. Okay. So you need to recognize that. Well, I'm not going to say, I probably shouldn't use terms like that because our brain gets resistance, right? I'm not going to tell you what you need to do, right? But it'd be a really good idea. And I found that you, you your image of yourself changes and not in a, not in a narcissistic uh, bullshit kind of way where you think that you're all that, and you know, arrogance and all that kind of crap. Right. Uh, but your, your view of yourself changes. Right. And in all honesty, it puts the reason that you're training for self-defense and all that in a different light. I mean, I asked the kids at the dojo this, right. Um, do you think you're, you're valuable? Do you think that you're important? Right. And this usually comes, it usually comes, uh, hand in hand with a, with a, uh, a lesson on respect, right? I teach them at the dojo. We define respect as showing other people, places, and things that they're as important to you as you are to you. Okay. That's respect. Okay. And then I say, do you think you're important? Yes. Yeah, sensei. Fantastic. Right. Because, well, where do we put security guards? Do we put security guards on banks and jewelry stores or do we put security guards on trash deep, trash dumps, right? They kind of look at me and banks and jewelry stores. Why? Well, because that stuff's really valuable and people don't want it to be stolen. Oh, okay. So perhaps, right, we need to make sure that we recognize our own value. Why else would we, we be learning to protect ourselves, okay? Well... There are lots of other reasons, but they're all ego based, right? I need to be seen as something that I don't think that I am. I need to whatever. It's it's usually filling in a lack of some sort, right? Um, not notwithstanding, you know, f fun and enjoyment, but I can think of lots lots of things that are fun or even more fun, and I don't walk away with bruises or the potential of a broken bone or dying in class, right? So, but anyway, so earth, right? Um, we recognize our value. Who are we, who are we valuable to, right? Those kind of things, right? What do we stand for, right? Um, what's non-negotiable in our lives, okay? What will we take a bullet for? Those kind of things, right? It's, it's this realm, okay, of, of command, leadership, Right. Value, those kind of things. Right. All right. We'll move to water. Okay. So this water realm, and again, essential nature, right? Si. Okay. Kotsu of water. What is the nature of water? And there's lots of different things here, right? Um, and indirectly it points to scientific kind of things, knowledge, the the student and the teacher, the researcher, that kind of thing, right? The scientist. Um, but what we're looking at here is the, the knowledge side of things, right? What do we know, right? What do we know that can help other people, right? What do we know about ourselves? What do we know about the world? What do we know about the subject that we're trying to master? What do we know or in many cases, right, we're trying to work on something, we're trying to produce results, we're trying to be successful financially in a relationship, in business, in the market, in the dojo, whatever, right? What do we not know? Okay, what what is it that we we're missing, right? And are we actively trying to get to those things, or are we hoping that we can skip steps three, seven, and twenty-two and still get as far as other people, or I'm going to play the blame game kind of thing. Okay. So, uh, but water, there's, there's this, uh, uh, there's this, uh, teaching. And I think I went over it a couple of episodes ago, but it has to do with a still pond. Was it mind like water? Maybe. Yeah. That one. Okay. So if I have a bowl of water and it's perfectly still and undisturbed, right, it's mirror like. Okay. So this has to do with reflection. Okay. So uh, in, in our dojo, we have the, these vows of intention. And one of the vows is I intend to learn as much as, as possible about myself, my world, and my martial art. Okay. 
And it's actually a spin on things from, uh, from Ikkyo. Okay. So what do I know? What do I know that I don't know? Right. Um, what are my limitations? What are my strengths that plays back over into the, in the earth realm? These, these things all feed each other. Okay. Um, what is it that I need to know more of? Okay. Do I really know the difference between a belief, a fact, and a truth? Or do I do what most people do and say, I'm making this first person because this is something I had to work out, right? Um, teachers taught it, but I had to look at lots of examples and make sure that I was clear about this, right? Most people confuse those three, right? They act as though beliefs are truths or they act as though beliefs are facts or they play around with the idea, well, this is my personal truth, okay? Well, is your personal truth in alignment with actual truth? Or are you just making shit up as you go along? Not you. You're all enlightened. Okay. But uh, do we understand the difference? Okay. Are we operating in accordance with, right? So it's okay. Again, it's okay to have beliefs, right? Beliefs are, are things that we've decided are true or not true or whatever that I need to navigate a certain area of my life or to navigate a certain aspect or a certain activity or whatever. First get involved in martial arts, right? I have a belief or I have faith that I can learn this, right? That I can, I can do this. Otherwise, why bother? Okay. Um, and for people who say that they're not belief or faith-based people, right? Um, I beg to differ, right? Every time you hop into a car or walk down the street, right? You have faith or belief that most of these yahoos are going to be following the traffic laws. They're not going to be, uh, you know, texting while they're driving, or they're not going to have a heart attack and veer off the road and run you over. Okay. If that were not true, you would not be wandering around, or we generally would not be wandering around, only partially paying attention to where we're going and what's going on around us. Okay. Uh, I have faith and belief that the world will continue to turn at what a thousand miles an hour, whatever it is. Um, all these things, right? Um, that it's not just going to stop. I know that I have that belief because I continue to work on goals as though there will be a tomorrow and many more tomorrows for me, regardless of my age. Okay. I don't know about you, but that's what works for me. Okay. Um, so it's okay to have it's okay to have beliefs. It's not about only facts and truths, right? So facts are um, facts are really based on like measurement systems, okay? Um, like right now, as we're recording this, it's eight forty seven p.m. Eastern time, right? Eastern time, okay? So if you're in a different part of the United States, you're in a different part of the world, you're listening to this five days, five months, five years from now, right? It's a different time for you than the time that that I uttered. Okay, so it's a measurement thing. We need things like that because I need to. Let's say I'm, you know, I'm meeting with Phil, right? And we're gonna we're gonna discuss some things, or he's bringing me in to do a seminar or whatever, right? And we're gonna do that, right, on August twenty seventh of two thousand and twenty three, right? And we're going to meet between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. All of those things make it very specific so that we can meet based on, you know, based on a Gregorian calendar, based on a 24-hour time clock, based on time zones, based on geography, all these kind of things, right? It makes it so that he and I can be in the same geographical place at the same time on the same day. Otherwise, without those things, we, we couldn't do it, right? It's important that we know whether or not we're measuring things, like I'm setting my office up, right? So it's important to know that I, whether I'm using one side of the tape measure or the other, because the numbers are different depending on whether I'm using imperial or metric, right? 37 inches is very different than 37 millimeters or centimeters or meters, right? So knowing what those things are helps us navigate, okay? But facts are expedients used to measure so that we can relate to each other and our world. Okay. 
truths are things that are what they are and cannot be argued rationally, right? right? Oxygen, air, gravity, right? All these things, right? Now, I used to just say they can't be argued, and then somebody said, yes, they can. And then we got in this little debate about it, and his point was anything can be argued. So I had to add the word rationally, okay? Because I had to use this conventional thing called language to be more specific, right, to make something more clear. But the difference between these two is facts are easily conveyed with language, Truths, more often than not, have to be experienced. You can know it and still not be able to explain it very well. Okay, it's like the different, the two different mandala, right? Things are on the Taizokai mandala. Those are conventional truths. It's two o'clock. Somebody's Caucasian. They're a male. They are wearing a black T-shirt. Whatever, right? Um, on the Kongokai mandala, it's it's universal truths. It's the the substrata that make things up right so it's you can experience it but describing it in words and that's how you know whether you're working with conventional truth or ultimate truth conventional truth really really easy to convey okay universal truth okay that's where you if you've ever read a book on zen by dt suzuki right holy shit <laughs> but you have to use all those words to try to hint at it but still the person's going to have to go and meditate on it or, or observe the world or have experiences or whatever before they're going to get it. Okay. So anyway, so the water realm is about knowledge, right? And what I know, what I know, I don't know that kind of thing, right? It's seeking the truth. It's, it's trying to learn a technique, right? Get the nuances of it. Uh, again, what do I know about it? What don't I know about it? Right. And again, no thing doesn't matter. Okay. So this is the, this is the, uh, the eternal researcher, right? Just, just a study or a, a student of life, right? It's paying attention to things and, but it's also applying what you know. Okay. You, you have a framework, you're using logic and rationale to make things happen and not just a gut feeling. Okay. Most of you already know that nothing irritates me more than somebody who uses the word feel where the word think belongs. Okay. Feelings are subjective. Not only are they subjective in that we change based on the input, right? But they're also subject, sub, they're also subject to electrical storms in your brain, chemical processes, all those kind of things, right? The, the, the receptors, right? I have certain areas of my body based on uh, an accident that I was on, nerve damage and whatnot, that has little to no sensation. And the sensation that's there is is a numb, I know that I'm touching it, but I'm, nothing is registering beyond that, okay? So how how much, what, what's our health like, right? Um, so that we can make sure that the receptors are working right what's our health like to make sure that the brain is working properly and effectively, right? What kind of nutrients and, and vitamins do we have to make sure that we're taking in to make sure that those things are operating to the best of our ability? Do we know, right? Is that part of our YouTube uh, binge watching or TikTok binge watching or whatever it is that we're doing um, or not? Okay. The fire realm, right? Um, again, with power, right? You can know a lot, you can stand for things and whatnot, but it's not until, you know, you you just, it's the passion, right? It's the, it's the expression, right? It's the fire in the belly to get things done, to make it happen, right? From the earth realm, we have this firm resolve, this will happen. But if there's nothing firing over on the fire side, right, to get it done now, to get it done before I die to, right? If there's nothing like that going on, then yeah, okay. Um, it'll be so what? When somebody else makes it happen, okay? So, but again, there's this expression, there's, 
this is also the realm of of uh, artistry and art and expression. So uh, symbology and whatnot. I, I pointed some of these things out earlier, and I have a ton of stuff that needs to go up in the office. But what I do, part of my power is I surround myself with imagery that represents that which I'm seeking, that which I'm trying to live to, that which is positive energy and perspective. Uh, I just gave away, uh, again, all this stuff is in here. I've got a wall full of st still uh, bubble wrapped artwork and stuff that was saved from the fire. Uh, but I had these these pictures that I had uh, gotten a long time ago. And you've probably seen like poster sized versions, but I had smaller ones that were framed and they had this this word right on each of these uh, vision and transformation and those kind of things. Right. And um, I just gifted them to somebody the other day. Right. They're in a transition point in their life and they're in a new apartment, but the walls are bare and things like that. So it's very sanitary. It's very very stagnant. And I know that they're working on this development of much more personal power and all that. So I said, you know, you don't have to accept them, but would you like these? Put them on the wall. Feng Shui the place. That's a, that's a good term. It's a Chinese term, right? But Feng Shui is, is the, it, I don't care how deep you get into it, but the whole idea is you're creating an environment for yourself that is inspirational, right? it nurtures the spirit, right? It makes you feel more alive, alert, more valuable, more at one, at peace, at whatever, okay? And so, you know, I have things that will be up in my office that are just a reflection of different aspects of me, right? A lot of you know that I'm a, I'm a Trekkie, right? So I've got these things all over the place. And, uh, but I've got Mikio things. I have warrior things. I have, uh, you know, just these different aspects. Right. And it's a place that I can go even in my own home. Right. It's a place that I can go to recharge, to just be right. And they're all aspects of me. Okay. So I recommend, right. That you surround yourself with images, reflections, reminders, right? Symbols of that which you're seeking, that which you want to be, right? There's something in the in the personal development realm. It's called a um, what the hell is that called? A uh, a vision board, right? Get this board, right? Find pictures of whatever, right? Uh, type of car you want to have or uh, scenery, right? My mine would have like, uh, well, I, I don't, I don't have a vision board. My laptop, I practically live on my computer when I'm not teaching at the dojo. So my uh, my uh, security screen, right? My unlock screen. Uh, I just changed it. What is that? It is. Oh, it's a beach scene, right? It's a beach scene. I love traveling. I, I love the Caribbean. The, those kind of things, right? So it's a beach scene, right? And then my background, uh, I, I just changed that one as well. Um, that one is, don't tell me, I know this. Mm, I just changed it. <laughs> well, you know what? I'll do this. Do, 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 do. Get rid of all these things that are on my screen because I'm constantly working on more than I can. Sorry, that's the beach screen. The, the unlock screen is... Oh, duh. Um, it is a, uh, a Buddhist uh, mind uh, kind of thing uh, that represents awareness and uh, being tuned in. So anyway, um, but from this fire realm, right, uh, it's, it's that which nurtures the spirit and ignites that passion, right, to get things done, right? Um, you know, getting out feeling the sunlight, right? It, there's, what is it? 15 minutes a day produces uh, the sunlight, right? Being in the sun, um, your body produces all the vitamin D that it needs, right? Uh, there's also, there's a B vitamin or two that's in there as well that gets synthesized uh, that way as well, right? Uh, and it's great. It's great uh, uh, medical therapy uh, when you're ill, right? Stay closed in, stay away from, you know, the sunlight and all that. 
it, it, it just slows things down. That's actually one of the biggest things they found uh, during the Spanish flu breakout way back in, what was that, 1918, something like that, um, that um, the patients that were closest to big windows with open curtains and all that, right, um, recovered faster and uh, just different, right? And so then they had um, nature therapy. They set up, set up tents in the in the lawn around the hospital and move people out on on nice days move people out and put them under the tents so the air would blow on them they were in nature they were breathing fresh air sun sunlight all that kind of stuff and they found that people responded faster to that faster to that than they did to any medication interesting stuff right uh, or just to me <laughs> all right the wind realm right the wind realm has to do with activity and accomplishment. Okay. What are you accomplishing? And again, this does not have to be the Taj Mahal. Okay. Sometimes just sitting down again, I, I talked about, you know, having a piece of paper and jotting out things that, you know, you value and why you're valuable and a self-assessment and all that. You do the same thing on this side, right? Make a list of all the things that you've accomplished, right? That you've done. Right. I don't care if it was like, you know, I planned a vacation or a day getaway and I made it happen. I don't care if it was uh, I talked to the boss about a job or day off or, you know, getting a week off to go to a seminar or whatever. Right. And uh, I got it. Right. Those kind of things. Right. It doesn't have to be. Most people th most people dwell on like if it's not big and would impress other people and stuff like that, then it's just not, um, you know, it's not worthy of a list. Okay. But the reality about success and power is that success breeds success. Okay. Little ones set up, set us up for confidence and, and positive vision and all that kind of stuff to do something bigger and something bigger and something bigger. And, and, and eventually, you know, what you're, what you, what you think, well, let me make that more personal, right? Um, the things that I, I currently do and the things that don't bother me anymore, whatever, right? Um, there was a, there's a past me that would never have believed that I would be doing the things I'm doing. One of which is, podcast and other people actually want to listen to what, I, what the hell I have to say. Really? Seriously? Okay. But there's no neediness to it. I feel an obligation now, right? It's not, I'm not doing this because, right, I need to be like one of the top guys in the Bujinkan or Ninjutsu or whatever. Um, I'm constantly getting questions from people. And if I can help, then I'm willing to help. And if I can't, I'll tell you that. And I'll hopefully, if I, if I know, I'll point you in a different direction. Okay. Because I'm, here to help, right? And sometimes that runs into, so it can create problems for some people, most people understand, right? Part of the helping is I also have to, you know, make sure that my family's okay and the bills are paid and all that kind of stuff. So, right, if I can create programs that people want to get that can also help me take care of my family, then as a teacher, I can be available much more often than the guy who um, doesn't want to be that guy, right? Doesn't want to be, right? I'm not doing a commercial dojo. I'm whatever, right? Okay. Well, then you're going to continue to teach out of your backyard or your garage or be at the subject of your, be at the whim of your job or whatever. And you're just not going to be able to be one of those senseis that, that is available, right? And again, I'm only speaking to people that are like that, right? I'm just, again, speaking third person, but, um, I decided that I wanted to be available. Um, and I enjoyed doing this. I mean, are you kidding me? Wow. And it's not, not about the teacher part because that's that's a heavy burden, right? Because I got to give the right, right lessons to the right person at the right time so that I don't confuse them. So I don't, so I don't do something akin to handing a loaded gun to a baby kind of thing, right? So I have to make sure I'm assessing the people that I'm giving certain lessons to, whatever, right? So anyway, um, the void realm is the ability to think and communicate. So uh, this is a higher level consciousness kind of thing where it's it's in the realm of like knowing yourself, uh, expressing what you need, but it's it's 
where, where am I missing? Right. Where, where am I misfiring? So if I made a list, right, let's say that I made a list of the, the five elements, right. Earth, water, fire, wind, void. I went back through the recording of this and I kind of jotted some things out on each one. And again, you can go back to other, other episodes and uh, depend on what, what it is that you're working on. Right. You make this list. Right. And then the things that, the, the one the areas and you'll know right you know you right at least enough to be able to do this simple exercise where okay this one right I, I i'm i'm pretty confident myself i see my own my self value and all that right so for right now i'm going to give it a plus right i'm going to put a plus sign next to it right okay research knowledge what am i reading what am i studying do i know do I, am i operating based on belief fact trip maybe I'm not sure, right? And that's going to take some, some observation. It's going to take some, I'm going to have to use the water realm to see how well I'm operating in the water realm. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to put a question mark. Okay. And then passion, energy, right? Um, am I jumping on opportunities, right? Am I, am I out there? Am I living life? That kind of thing, right? Am I, am I trying to, to feel, right? The vibrancy of life, the fire realm, right? Now I'm feeling kind of sluggish, whatever. Okay. That's going to get a minus sign, right? Uh, what about, you know, uh, are you out there helping? Are, are, are you, are you accomplishing things? Are you accomplishing your goals? Are you, are you working on stuff on a regular basis? Yeah, pretty much, right? I mean, for the moment, I'm going to say yes. So I'll put a plus sign there, whatever, right? And then now you've got this little assessment thing, right? I don't need to hang out and do stuff in the in the ones that have plus signs, right? The question mark things, maybe. Maybe I can take some time for that. But where am I really deficient, right? Because in, in Mikyo, right, in in, uh, in the Noble Eightfold Path, right effort is one of those eight, right? Am I paying attention? to what I'm doing with my resources, right? Right effort, okay? Am I putting most of my energy, time, resources, and things on those things that I say are important so I can get things done, right? So I can be moving forward, so I can be generating even more power and success and whatnot, right? Or am I squandering it, right? Am I wasting it on stuff that's really not that important? Well, like, like I, wa I love watching that like movie or I love watching that TV show. It has me hooked. Okay. How does that serve you? Okay. I know it makes you feel good, right? I know that, but how's it affecting these other realms, right? So, uh, but in Mikyo, right, we don't just have right effort. We have the four right efforts, Okay. I want to create more positive in my life. I want to increase the current positive, right? Things that I'm already doing, I want to do more of that. I want to reduce the negative, right? Things that can't be eliminated, I want to at least reduce them, okay? And I want to eliminate the negative that can be eliminated, okay? If I can do that, by default, just hell, just reducing and eliminating negative will produce more positive or at least produce more resources, time, effort, money, whatever, right? To do those other things. But increasing the positive that's already going on and creating more positive, right? That's personal power, okay? It's what you're doing with your energy, right? It's it's like nature, right? And I, I love water, right? I don't care if it's the ocean, river, lake, whatever, okay? I love being around it. Um, I love seeing the sunlight pierce through the trees, um, through the leaves and things like that. I don't care if I'm driving. I don't care if I'm hiking. I don't care if I'm sitting out, just breathing the air. That kind of thing creates a feeling and a sensation and an experience in me that life just doesn't get any better than this, okay? Now, does that mean that I'm making money? Does that mean that I'm, uh, you know, doing dad things with my kids? Or no, right? But what I've what I've done through this little exercise is since that does it for me, then 
I create more opportunities to do that. My life is really, really busy. So sometimes it's just a matter of I'll pick up my lunch, a sandwich, a bag of chips or something like that, right? And I'll drive to a local boat launch because we live along a river, right? So uh, the state has these little parking areas with a boat launch and it's right by the river and all that kind of stuff, right? And I'll pull in and I'll park and I may just put the windows down and enjoy my lunch while I'm staring out the windshield at the river going by, or I'll get out and go sit on a rock and have my lunch, or I'll have my lunch and then I'll just get out, walk along and just stare at the river going, whatever it is, right? But I can find little moments, right? I'm taking a lunch break anyway. How about if I take a lunch break and do this at the same time, right? What is it for you? What kind of things that when you do them or when you're around certain people or things or places or you're having certain experiences gives you the feeling or has in the past given you the feeling that life just doesn't get any better than this? Okay. That's things you want to increase. Okay. The things that are like energy vampires, if you can't eliminate them, you at least reduce them. Okay. And things that you've always wanted to do, do them. You may not be able to do the big thing. I don't have time. I don't have money. I don't, not today, but what's on the list that you could do in a day or an hour or whatever. I've always wanted to see that. Well, maybe you can't go to see it, but shit, go online, right? There's 3D experiences and all kinds of things, right, that you could do, Okay. Right? Well, I've always wanted to like be an astronaut. Okay. Maybe you can't do that today. But could you throw a blanket out in the backyard or up on the roof if you're in an apartment building or whatever and lay and stare at the stars and imagine? Okay. I don't know. If I were doing that, that's that's what I would do. Okay. I do whatever I could to get closer to it. If I live near one of the places that have space launches or whatever, right? Um, like I said, I'm a I'm a diehard Trekkie, but at the same time, it's like my grandfather worked on space missions, Mercury, Gemini, those kind of things. He was an engineer, right? So he got me kind of hooked on that kind of stuff, right? Um, so whenever I'm on vacation, if I'm near, and my wife knows, right? If we are on a cruise that goes out of Miami or Tampa or something like that, right? Um, and I, I let her know, you know, and she, and she knows by now it's been 15 years, right? She knows, right? If we're within an hour drive of Canaveral or one of those places, right? If we're in Texas, right? And Houston, right? I'll, we'll, we'll drive out to one of the viewing places and look across at one of the, one of the uh, shuttles or whatever that's going to take off. It doesn't have to be that day. It could be in a week. It could be whatever, right? I go to NASA. I go to the museums. I go to, uh, we live here in Pennsylvania. So closest thing for me that's not an Air Force museum is in Washington, D.C. It's a three and a half to four hour drive. And it's the Air and Space Museum, part of the Smithsonian. Okay. It puts me closer to being in touch with dreams and those kind of things, right? It's just it, things that charge and do it for me. And if you don't know, then you, again, same thing I used to tell my teenagers, Google it, right? So part of this, and I, hopefully I've alluded to it as I've gone around the mandala, part of this is in doing assessments. What do I do that matches this realm? Okay. And just jot it out, whatever. Okay. Be more clear on what I already own, what you already own, okay? what you already have to whatever degree. It doesn't have to be, you know, ginormous, right? It could just be, I like to do that, right? I like to have thoughts that are in that direction, right? Um, you know, I, 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 own the fact that I'm a warrior protector, whatever it happens to be for you, right? I make these lists, right? So part of it is assessment and, and 
then once you have it and you recognize these things, right? Own it. Don't be ashamed of it, right? Don't follow the, sorry, don't follow mom and grandma and childhood teachers lessons, right? That, uh, you know, you need to be humble and all. You can be humble, right? But you can also recognize that you've done some pretty cool shit in your life, that you know some pretty cool shit, that you've helped people out in pretty cool friggin' ways. You can recognize those things without being an arrogant ass, okay? Own it, okay? And be greedy for life, right? There's nothing wrong with wanting to be the best version of yourself. You'll enjoy life a whole lot better, right? Money never let, money never made anybody uh, happy. I believe that that was spoken by somebody who didn't have it or have the resources to trade for it so they could feel okay. okay? And this isn't about me wanting tons of money, but it sure makes life a whole lot more comfortable, right? Than wallowing in squalor. Okay. So, yeah, but monks and nuns and monks and nuns also have to go door to door begging for food or standing out in the corner with their hands out. Alms, alms. Okay. And a culture has to be conditioned to give so that they don't die. Okay. So the ideology works out really well as long as all factors, all, all necessary pieces are in place. Right. But what the world needs now more than ever is more happy, positive, powerful, productive people, people that are able to do things. Right. I know there's lots of people running around um, championing certain causes, right? And, and, and condemning bad things in the world. Those things exist. Those causes need to be championed, right? But it's not empowering and it's not the sign of a powerful person to do nothing more than condemn it, condemn people that are doing it, and just be thinking about that all the time, right? Powerful people have created the resources and the ability to help with those things directly instead of shaming or guilting or whatever everybody else to do it. But they can't. They'll just be a voice. Well, okay, I get it. But maybe our time, energy, resources, and whatnot... Um, since we can't do anything about it at the moment, would be best spent putting ourselves in a better position so that we could. Maybe. All right. So let's come back around to the uh, the Sanmitsu. Okay. Because all these things have to do with owning, maintaining, right? This personal power. So here's the here's the the formula that I was given. Right. That when all else fails and I forget or life derails me or whatever. Right. It's a simple formula that I just go back to okay? because it's kind of been proven for the last over twenty five hundred years. Right. OK. Thought, word and deed. Right? And again, thought is thoughts more about intention and vision, not think if you're thinking in words and plans and and beliefs and all that kind of stuff you're really in the word section right of the sanmitsu all right so from the th but we'll use these conventional words right from the thought part of the sanmitsu see what you need to see even if it's just visualizing it in your own head right but see what you need to see okay to become more the person that you need to become or that you want to become, okay? Look for positive, powerful, productive examples in the world. Tune your mind to the positive. Go out of your way to look for them. It's, it's just, it seems like it's commonplace in today's world, right? To gravitate toward looking at, looking for, and reminding ourselves of all the negative shit that's going on. 
tune your tune your mind to something else. Okay, see what you need to see. See a different version of yourself. See a future version of yourself. Right. See the see the best that the world has to offer. Stop watching the news or reading the news. Okay. Until you've got more of this armor on that protects you against that crap. Okay. Even the Buddha said, even the enlightened ones must consistently and constantly mind mind. Lest it gets poisoned by all the mud and muck and shit that's going on. Okay. But just because it's going on doesn't mean that that's what you need to focus on. Okay. From the word side, say what you need to hear. I don't care if you call it positive affirmations, whatever. Okay. If you're waiting for other people to give you permission to do things, if you're waiting for other people to tell you what you need to hear about yourself, if you need other people to remind you that you've done this or that or whatever, right? That's what, why we make those lists. Okay. Read them. Okay. Remind you, you remind yourself, right? That you're unique, you're powerful, you're, you, you're influential, right? And even if you don't have people telling you that, and even if you don't have people that you're actually directly influencing, never, ever forget that there are people that you come in contact with that like what they see, like what they hear, uh, you are affecting them in a positive way, right? You are a role model, whether you want to be or not, right? The question is which, in which direction, right? Because um, there's somebody looking at you or ha has, and they're not always the same person, right? But there are people who have, are, and will look at you and think these words or something similar. I want to be just like him. I want to be just like her. I want to do this like that. Somebody in the future is going to say, I took up this vocation. I took up this hobby. I took up this kind of thing. Um, you know, I uh, decided I wanted to learn how to tell jokes and all that because of fill in your name blank. Right. And that just inspired me. Okay. So you might as well take control of it and make it happen on your terms and not accidentally. And that's what it really comes down to. All of this always comes down to living intentionally, not accidentally. Okay. So see what you need to see. Stop waiting for it to show up. Say what you need to hear. Stop waiting for other people to show up to say that thing. Right. And have and generate the experiences that you need to have to live a more happy, positive, powerful, vibrant life. Create this, the experiences you need to have. Stop waiting for the time to be right. The time will never be right. There will never be a best time. Doesn't exist. All right? So see what you need to see, say what you need to hear, and generate the experiences you need to have to become, to be a better, more powerful, product, to be the powerful person that is already just, it's already the potential. Just make it more real. You're already there to a certain degree. Make it more. Okay. I think I told everybody uh, at least at, at once or twice in a couple of past episodes that um, living this way and taking my teachers and uh, lessons to heart and all that. And, um, you know, I, uh, uh, I was thinking about different names for my dojo. Right. And um, I just, I, I was telling people, right. I mean, this, this part of saying things that you need to hear, right. Is also telling everybody, right, what you're doing and that kind of stuff, right? You come up with people that can help you, right? That's power too. The, having a network of people that can help you get things done, so that you don't always have to do it yourself, right? Um, but I used to tell people, you know, I just I want to I want to do so much. I want to do it all, right? I'm just greedy and I want to make sure it happens. I need it to happen, right, as quickly as possible, right? 
We're only here once. And one of my friends, um, she's Canadian, but uh, she, her ex-husband, right, was Japanese. And uh, she wrote this thing out, right? And she goes, here, that could be the name of your dojo. It was Yokobari, right? Yokobari Dojo, right? And Yokobari means greedy for life. I didn't make it so, but I've never forgotten Yokobari. Okay? So anyway, um, I know people have come, people have gone, people have stayed on, whatever, right? Questions, comments? Thanks for joining me here for episode 150. But by the way, the background will probably change as, as things, uh, you know, progress. But anyway, questions, comments, anybody? I'm only seeing uh, Phil over from YouTube. Uh, I don't see anybody else on. And I don't know. I mean, usually I have chats that pop in with people saying hi and all that. Um Let's see. I just can't. I can't hit. Um, let's see. James told me there's something I can't do so that it doesn't pop up on the screen because we've been hijacked in the past and all that. So let's see. That's YouTube. That's on the CUDA and podcast side. Mm. Summer read only. All right, well, here we are. Okay, well, I don't see anything from anybody, and I don't want to beleaguer or be, belabor. Uh, I don't want to draw this out. <laughs> so um, what are we doing next week? Uh, next episode of Kuden, next Monday. Kuden, Kuden, Kuden. What are we doing? Uh, next one is managing positive change. So um, if you have a problem setting and achieving big goals, um, uh, the whole idea and, and how to, how to adjust things, right. So that you can, um, get positive forward momentum happening, right. And, and, and get action happening. Right. So this is for those folks that uh, might feel stuck or, and, and again, it could be in any area of your life. It could be in training. It could be again, life relationships, job, whatever. Okay. Um, it's always about approaching life from the perspective of a warrior, right? Um, and stop wanting all the challenges to go away. Challenges cause you to grow, right? If something's challenging, it's the world telling you that you are lacking in a one or more skill sets that are necessary for handling this thing easily, okay? So figure out what those skill sets are. You, you have a couple that are not up to snuff and or you have one or more that you're lacking and need. So um, it's easy for ego to avoid things that are uncomfortable because, well, it's uncomfortable. But that comfort zone, right, and the things outside the comfort zone are the things that force you to learn new skill sets. Okay. Uh, let's not be like the martial artists that gravitate toward fight systems that are already in alignment with what they're good at or what they prefer. Cause then you have to hope that the attack is that thing. Right. Um, that's why we're in a system that <laughs> that's designed to handle whatever pops up. Okay. So anyway, so we'll talk about that. And I do, I do have a couple that are coming up that are specific to techniques. So you won't want to miss those if that's your, if that's your thing, right? Um, if I haven't been approaching, approaching those, right? So a lot of these things, right? Remember, there's three, three sides to, to our training, right? Um, Taiken is body skills. That's what seems to attract everybody, right? Uh, Taiden, sorry, Taiden. Uh, Kuden, right? Mind. Uh, personal power. I tend to combine the Kuden knowledge side and the Shinden, the life experience, life skills things all into this Kuden uh, podcast. So we're, we're covering two with one. Um, and a couple of those things coming up, but a couple of weeks from now, 
Um, we're going to talk about what's in a technique name. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, where else? Uh, how to look at kata, the point of kata, uh, how to be how to become invisible to attackers, that kind of stuff, right? So, um, but anyway, lots of things, lots of lots of stuff to cover. If there's a topic or uh, questions, subjects, or whatever that you would like me to touch on, just email them in, right? You can send it to uh, warriorc at warrior-concepts-online.com. Um, I don't know if we, I think we have a support one, uh, support at the online ninja academy.com thing there right now, but we're trying to funnel everything to, through the warrior concepts online.com just because it's, it's easy for us to get everything in one place. So remember there's a hyphen between each of those words. So warrior C the letter C at warrior dash concepts dash online.com. All right. For those of you that are listening in on audio only, I apologize if I made references to visual things that you can't see. Um, but I shoot this live uh, through uh, uh, vi visual form and then that stuff gets stripped out for you guys. So uh, you can always go over to uh, YouTube to my channel at Jeffrey Miller um, or Kage 36. Uh, there's a couple of things over there, but uh, if you type in Kuden podcast, this should pop up, but if you end up when you end up on the channel, select the live uh, the live option in the menu and um, do all these that way. All right, that's it, guys. I will talk to you again next time on Kuden. So be safe, train hard, and uh, hopefully things uh, hopefully things are what you want them to be. All right, until next time. Get more of Kuden Radio. Subscribe through your favorite podcasting site or join our clan of serious modern warriors at OnlineNinjaAcademy.com.